all of you guys doing i hope you're staying safe sanitizing and just being indoors and you know just taking care of yourselves as much as it is important and today we have a very special guest kevin valley thanks for joining we have a special guest her name is kelty bob ramage from trash ticket so yeah. we are going to have a discussion with kelty for the next one hour and she's going to be doing a few cocktails and she's going to be talking to us so get ready to learn get ready to hear from kelsey what was her inspiration so and perhaps if you do have any questions to ask kelsey um i hope you can post them down so i'll be waiting for kelsey to join so give us a minute We are waiting for Kelsey to join. Hi, Kelsey. How are you doing? How are you doing? Yeah, really good. It's um, it's about twelve o'clock here, so there's like a little bit of a time difference. So. <laughs> okay. Yeah. A very big difference. I mean, it's evening here, so just getting ready for supper. Oh, nice. Yeah. Have you been? Yeah, pretty good. Um, I mean, considering we've um, we've had to, of course, shut uh, the bar um, in the last couple of weeks, and looks like it's going to be another like four weeks. But um, just using the time to you know take care of ourselves and make sure the staff's okay, and um, you know work some drinks from home. So it's been okay. It's been all right. I think I'm in a very lucky position um, to be able to like do things like this. Cause it's been quite some time, you know, I wanted to come to Kenya. What, how long ago <laughs> did you invite me? <laughs> we wouldn't be able to make it happen. A lot for you to learn, I guess. And also a lot for us to learn from you because you, you're a creative man. You, uh, you have a brain that works differently from most people in the industry. Thank you. <laughs> actually very fascinating because you take trash and turn it into interesting stuff. Yeah, well, we try to. Um, yeah, when we started Trash Tiki, I mean, um, I'm going to be perfectly honest, some of the recipes weren't all that good. So <laughs> it's, been, it's been a learning and developing over the last few years. But, um, um, you know, when we opened uh, Supernova, it um we we had to really learn learn how to work with local ingredients as well so i'll talk about some of those today um uh because i think that like working locally and working with stuff that's available to you to you in each, you know individual area is is as important as working with stuff that you're going to throw away i think the two are very symbiotic so yeah, so bef before you even talk about Trash Tiki and Supernova, just tell us, where did this start? Like, did you have, like, a big dream that you were going to be this way, or what happened? When we started Trash Tiki, or? What, say no, what no, like, for you, person, for you as a person, how did you find yourself here? Where did it all begin? Oh, God. <laughs> um... So I grew up in um, in Canada in, on the like on the west coast, um, okay. and I lived in a really small town like growing up, um, and so I, I moved to Vancouver for a little bit, and then I moved out to Toronto, and I was um, uh, I really wanted to get into the fashion industry, so I wasn't even bartending at that time. Um, so I like I went to school for fashion in Toronto. And then I started working for a company. Um, I'm not sure if anybody will remember it. I think it was a mostly a North American brand, but it was called Silver Jeans. It was a very, very 90s brand. <laughs> um, and I, I had a job where I was essentially the person that was, I was a production coordinator. So I was like, um, you know, pushing factories to be, uh, you know, finding cheaper ones and pushing them to be faster. So I was kind of like one of these not instrumental because there were so many people that there were a lot, there's a lot of people that have my job, but you know, as that part of the industry was happening, um, uh, 
uh, and you know, before Zara became as the and before H and M was as big as it was, just as those companies were kind of getting stronger and faster, and um, I had to turn around and say, you know, this this industry probably this isn't for me because I so I left it on a for a sustainability on a sustainability level, and also because I was working in a nightclub at the same time, and I was you know making more money, and it was more fun. <laughs> Um, but yeah, so through all that, like, you know, I left the fashion industry and then really started working, um, in a cocktail bar, uh, full time and moved back to the West coast and then, um, you know, became a sommelier and went, um, was working in a, in a restaurant called the Oakwood where I was GM. Um, and I just got kind of bored. Um, we were working with a lot of local produce and I got, um, I turned around and I, I, I felt like there was a lack of mentorship at the time and I was in a position where I, I didn't know like who to turn to and, you know, who to learn from. Um, so I like kind of like figured I, you know, I was, I think I was 28 or 29 or something. So I just kind of sold everything and that's when I moved to London and London, it was either like London, New York or Australia. And I felt like, you know, London at the time had the most bars that were, started being the most in innovative and this was like I guess this was 2014 2013 2014 so yeah there was like quite a lot of London bars that were that were sort of pushing the envelope in terms of creativity and and possibly an opportunity was there for me to find mentorship which I think is like one of the most important things in the industry you know exactly I mean mentorship is important uh, and I think that draws the question so when you go to London who were your first mentors that actually inspired you to stay? Um, I spent, I, honestly, I spent like six months bouncing around doing a lot of trial shifts. Um, um, and I ended up, you know, a friend suggested that I go into Dandelion and, you know, drop off a resume. So I did that. Um, and then I made some really shitty drinks for Ian <laughs> on my trial shift. Uh, I think I, I think I made like a oh god yeah I don't even want to say I feel like I made a Singapore sling and it was just so goddamn awful, um, <laughs> um, but like I think I think the important thing to note about you know starting working at Dandelion was there you know I, I had this expectation of like what mentorship was supposed to look like and it was like oh I'm gonna learn from you know Brian or Ian or I'm gonna learn from this person or that person but I ended up. Um, I learned a lot from the team that was around me just because they had brought together such an incredible group of like people that really cared about the drinks and the job. And, you know, from Aiden Bowie, you know, I learned so much about hospitality and how he treats people and how he keeps coming, people coming back and from Jenny as well and how she, you know, runs the floor and 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 keeps the you know the morale up and how wonderful she is with guests and um you know and then Mikey and and Alex who were just like and Simone so Simone's like a very tall um <laughs> Italian <laughs> fellow that was like one of the fastest bartenders he was like spider arms everywhere um so he like I learned a lot from him about how to like pick up the pace and be quicker and you know Mikey on how to be organized um back a house and you know control your costs and shit like that so like it wasn't necessarily like oh i'm gonna go to dandelion and you know learn how to be blah blah be cre creative which is what i w did do and you know learned a lot from you know ryan and ian and, and their process and how they make um uh drinks menus and how they go about the creative um to to you know in creating their cocktails but i also learned so much about myself and so much about you know hospitality and and everything about you know what goes in f to running a bar from my peers yeah, so immediately after that that i think when you started trash stick in 2016 if i'm not wrong but yeah. how did i do that like was it like did you sit down and actually look at everything in, in the environment and you're like um I just want to do something different or was it a dream? Um, I think it, yeah, it, I mean, Ian and, Ian and I were, were making drinks at the time. 
uh, for the last menu that we worked on together. And we just found that like, we worked really well together, but also, you know, we, we wanted, we wanted to create something and we were kind of seeing this huge movement in food, especially with, Dan Barber coming through London and, you know, doing his wasted pop-up where he was making, you know, he fed, I don't know, 6,000 people over the course of six weeks, um, you know, solely on stuff that would have been thrown away. Okay. Um, so we looked at that and we're like, you know, you look at Dandelion and, and you know, the, the nightly shifts and stuff like that and what we were sort of throwing away on a, on a night-to-night basis, even though we were, you know, starting to use, reuse ingredients and starting to do that a little bit. Um, we just saw a really need for the industry to sort of think about their ingredients like a chef would um, instead of just buying something to use as like a linear flavor profile. Do you know what I mean? Yes. So, I mean, what were your, probably what were your signature creations that uh, worked out? And how long did oh, it take? <laughs> yeah. um, I don't know if there was like signature drinks. All of our, all of our cocktails kind of with Trash Tiki were derivative of something, um, you know, so we'd look back, we'd research kind of these old uh, Tiki cocktails you know from you know beach bum or like whatever um and we would kind of reinvent them so we'd kind of look at what the the flavor profile was and then how do we like how do we recreate it and what's available to us now so usually when we like go in and go into a bar and we'd say okay you know save whatever you have oftentimes it would be like (laughs) lemon lime you know maybe some pineapple pulp and that was it so we'd have we'd have to kind of think of like, okay, so where where are we going to source you know outside flavors um, to sort of to build out uh, a better drinks menu because you can't really build a whole you know menu of six drinks on four flavors. Um, so that's when we started like reaching out to bakeries and we get like weirder shit like pastries and like chocolate stuff and so that's kind of when. Um, then we kind of pivoted into, you know, those, those, those really like rich, heavy flavors led themselves really well to Tiki, I guess. Um, so I mean, the, 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 at the end of it all, I think, you know, the best recipes that we got, we did, um, we did one on watermelon rinds. That's really great. So it's just super simple. So you like, you know, cut off your watermelon inside and use that for whatever you're going to use it for but the the outside is quite green and it's filled with chlorophyll so if you just like toss a bunch of sugar over that like you would an oleo the sugar sucks out all of the water and then you just give it a little like flash blend and what you get at the end is this really lovely like uh green watermelon syrup um so that's great to just like lob in a negroni or like do an espagliato um yeah that's that was one of my favorites i think <laughs> and uh, 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 of course now that leads to the next question what was one of your worst like the thing that you made <laughs> and then you were like <laughs> um okay okay um so <laughs> so we did our first pop-up um our very first ever pop-up and ian um didn't tell me that we were going to do it. Um, I was in Mexico. Um, so this is like, we were like tossing around this idea. I went down to Mexico to like do the Tahona society thing. I come back and I work a shift and then we hadn't done any of the prep and like, he hadn't really thought about the, you know, <laughs> the drinks yet. So we're like finished shift. It's like 3 AM thing starts. And like, I think it was, I can't remember some Tiki festival in London. Um, and we like worked all night and then I think at like 10 a.m. we're still in the basement and we just got in a cab and went straight to this thing. So it was like, I don't know, it was like some weird banana pineapple cachaça drink <laughs> with a maro. Like this sounds like a nightmare. <laughs> but I do remember that it was just like, oh, that, that was proper growth. <laughs> So talk to us after that. I, I I see you did a couple of things. You opened a couple of other different establishments. Talk about it, like. Yeah. Um. So September of last year, I opened um a bar called Supernova Ballroom. Um, it's like 
it's pretty big. Um, it's like a big, huge, like gorgeous uh, space that um, that was pretty special. Like we found it, apparently it was built in the 1920s, um, which for Toronto, I know that for like <laughs> Europe isn't very old, but it's quite old for Toronto. Um, so it's got these like really, really gorgeous, like uh, room that we really wanted to make more comfortable. Um, just so it didn't look as intimidating. So we put a lot of bright colors in there. Um, there's a lot of like textures, like velvets and stuff like that. Um, and we made it like a 70s disco bar. Um, okay. Yeah, so it's super like nostalgic to be in there. We play a lot of like Don Donna Summer and ABBA and that kind of stuff. Um, and then all of the drinks are, I guess like the drinks concept is uh, bubbly drinks on local produce, just to kind of like shorten it up. Um, but the reason that we did that and we didn't want to do like entirely off of waste was that um, being in Canada, it, it can be quite challenging, you know, getting fresh produce um, from within Ontario. And there's kind of like a bit of a, there's a couple of companies that are working on, you know, logistics and getting the produce from, from farms to, um, to uh, the bar itself. So think there's things like um, a company called 100 Kilometer Foods, which, you know, works with a whole lot of uh, local farmers, a lot of organics. Um, we really wanted to make sure that like 90%, we still use lemon juice and lime juice and stuff like that, but like 90% of all of the stuff that we bought was um, from Ontario. Um, yeah, I mean, it's it's a challenge when things are covered in snow for like four months a year. I mean, what's, what's interesting is that... Um here getting the fruits whatever it is it's you can always get you're guaranteed 24 7. Really? i think now the challenge is always where does my creativity stop because sometimes as a creative it can go like your mind can just wonder and so i think the question will be when do you stop your creativity from it becoming something that's just a maddening feeling because it's like every time you make a drink or you write a recipe you, you always have to think I want something that's just going to stay. But as a creative, you're always born to create something either because you've seen something else or when you're going out to even walk, you probably see too many things. So when do you know how to stop? I think as a creative, share that. Um, I think it's much easier to work within like a concept um, because it, yeah, it's totally easy to like, especially given, you know, our, ability to get anything from anywhere at any given time i mean i think this climate has certainly and will certainly like shut that down to a certain level um okay. uh yeah i think i think it's it's wonderful to be able to find like all of these crazy things that you could reach for but it's much more it, it requires a lot more creativity to work within a confined you know linear number of of ingredients um, and it, I find it, I find it a lot more interesting and challenging, you know, trying to figure out flavors. And that's sort of what I've done with Trash Tiki, because it is very limiting, you know, what you can do with stuff that other people, you know, you can only get your hands on what other people have thrown away. So, um, yeah, it's, uh, I, I find that like, yeah, getting, working within a narrow confines is actually like where your creativity starts to really develop. What was your experience being at Tales of a Cocktail or and just sharing this? Because I know sometimes it's just like, you. what was it? How do you feel to actually talk to guys about this and share this thing that you were turned from trash to gold and see it come to, like, because I guess after that, everyone was like, you, you became synonymous with turning trash into gold. Uh, at how do you feel? Yeah. I mean, Tails last year, I was absolutely shattered. <laughs> um, we, um, we ended up doing this thing with um, Absolute Vodka, where we, um, we set up a shipping container in the middle of the French Quarter and then, like, had these motorized bicycles and essentially picked up all of the recycling from uh, the different activations. Um, okay. It was hard, <laughs> you know, pedaling a bike. I'm not used to the heat, you know. 
Um, so it was hard, like pedaling a bike down down to the French Quarter, you know, for four hours in the, um, in the daytime in Louisiana. <laughs> um, and uh, there were a lot of bottles. So like Louisiana or um, New Orleans doesn't have um, essential recycling, you know, city city controlled recycling. I don't know what it's like in Kenya, but it's it's quite insane when you think about like how big tails is and how you know how many yeah. bottles get thrown away so um yeah i mean i i loaded up one of the trucks and got on the bike to like roll it to the to the to the shipping container and i couldn't get it going so this like lovely old couple with their like giant cups of daiquiris like pushed me to get going so i don't know it was like it was long and it was hard but it was really rewarding we ended up um filling a full shipping container and I, I can't remember how many tons of bottles um we ended up saving so it was quite cool and it's cool to see like the community come together as well and like help you out um yeah it was it was it was a cool thing i really hope that we get to do it you know maybe if not this year we get to continue to help um different cities you know with recycling programs so apart from trash tiki and supernova what other thing have you opened up because i i see that you're always opening up something what's a <laughs> um supernova has been the only thing that we like opened um i've had a couple of like there's been a couple of like funny little consulting projects that happened last summer so we did like um there's like an indoor mini golf that we did the drinks for <laughs> um but yeah supernova and trash tiki were like the main focuses and then um yeah just last year was just kind of like um <clears throat> uh just different uh consulting projects that you know we were helping either bars become more sustainable or you know you know brands help help them um create you know POS that's not as disposable and and just doing kind of like smaller projects like that in the in the lead up um what's I mean, someone I've actually asked this question about takeaway cocktails what's the model of sustainability for it like especially in this current situation um so we did um when this all happened we did start a, a mobile cocktail delivery service called uh dolly trolley drinks um okay. i think it's it's really difficult so i know that in the u.s anyways there's um in like it varies state to state and it it definitely varies in canada as well which is really unfortunate um so it was like actually delete illegal um up until uh like two weeks ago um to deliver alcohol to people um in canada and in a lot of different um in my province anyways um so there was a lot of like loopholes to get through like you have to deliver it with food um so we just like give them a bag of popcorn <laughs> um but i think it's like it's it's definitely not gonna do the volume that you know to keep a bar afloat or pay rent or any shit like that but it's definitely like if you can do it it's really really helpful to be able to to jump on that train um I, i'm just hoping that like governments kind of get behind people and they realize that you know we've been feeding and and watering and um you know providing hospitality to people for the last you know how however many years you know a lot of a lot of us have been in this industry um i think it's you know and having having to close and and being non-essential businesses i think governments need to really turn around and step up and and allow us to you know that little bit of revenue stream that that helps with your fixed costs while you're you know not able to pay rent is pretty mega definitely um talking about cocktails what are your favorite cocktails um well i i did a little drink for you guys if you want to i can make a a little cocktail um yes you can okay <laughs> i haven't had i mean it's it's only 12 30 here so i'm probably not gonna drink it but um um so i i wanted to do like a little tiki drink i haven't done tiki in a while and it was really nice to be able to do like a little trash tiki revival thing on here um so mm-hmm. i thought i have a little tiki mug this um yeah awesome it's from um uh smuggler's cove um So Definitely. I mean <laughs> Smugglers is interesting I shall say. Oh yeah, have you been there? Yeah, once. 
and I feel I should go back. It's a it's a it's a place where it's like you're stepping into a different time zone. Yeah, it is. It's there's they really do the escapism really well there. Um Yeah. So I made a little um syrup this morning. Um so this is uh after I made coffee, I just took the coffee grounds um and then peeled some like uh orange rinds in there and then covered that with uh sugar. So just let it sit uh as an oleo. Um Okay. Uh so it's super simple and then you add a little bit of water to it and then what you can do is just strain it back through a coffee filter and what you get is kind of like um you get an oleo that's just a little bit of coffee but not not too much i find that using second second pass on coffee grains is actually quite um it tastes like it's a second pass on coffee grains if that makes sense <laughs> um right so i'm just going to do uh i should probably get a jigger right? knife <laughs> i've been bartending at home and i really have no equipment here so here we go <laughs> just wing it come on wing it just wing it it's okay yeah Um right so um I don't actually have a huge home bar like a lot of y'all um so I'm just using a little bit of have have a club um so I'm straight in there um this uh orange and coffee oleo Ugh. um so I'll just do 50 mils of that I'm sorry 15 mils of 50 um yeah, so for me you get a great fruit juice Um, yeah, so for guys who are watching, what's that uh, we are going to post yeah i was just saying for guys who are watching we're going to post a photo of uh, the cocktail with the recipe yeah. so that you guys can try it as well in the house for sure fine super easy sure. um you're going to put some ice in here i'm going to i you should crush the ice but um you can do that with like a tote bag you don't need like a lewis bag or anything fancy um it's actually quite okay. a lot of fun if you have a hammer and <laughs> a tote bag You just give it a quick smash and then um touch it angostura um hopefully you've got a little reusable straw this one's made out of bamboo and um yeah, it. talking about bamboo the rest of the after. okay definitely yeah so talking about bamboo i mean sustainability is actually a very interesting thing and it's taking up but um how do bars um, what's your one suggestion to bars that would like to take up sustainability and they're still struggling because one of i mean it's a big challenge because there's one aspect to it where it's going to be slightly expensive in the beginning and that's a big worry so what's what can you tell them um i would say start cheap <laughs> um okay. so and, and what i mean by that is like it yes it can be expensive to like when you're thinking about water and energy and like we're using um you know buying bamboo straws and stuff like that um it is cheaper in the long run to start reusing your ingredients so like if you're thinking about buying and especially in in this time you know if you're if you're buying one thing let's let's use plums for example like we bought a bunch of plums last year i brought a bought a full case at a time you buy them in season it's a little bit cheaper that way um make a syrup from them and then we like we always have this like vat of um vodka with like 20% sugar added to it. So anytime that you juice something, it's sitting in your prep room, you can just throw the the pulp and obviously keep them separate. So you can take the pulp and you put that in the vodka and that actually sat for so the plum one sat for 3 months. Um and okay. what we had at the end was we strained it strained out the pulp. We had this really lovely like plum liqueur. We just added a little bit of water to it and then that you know lasted us all all winter. So it just makes sense to like and you know that the cost of a plum liqueur was like nothing for a liter it was i think it cost us like you know 15 dollars canadian which in snow pesos is quite good <laughs> um so you didn't answer my question on uh, what's your what's your top 3 favorite cocktails my top 3 yes okay uh, <laughs> uh and why french 75 on cognac uh, okay Yeah, anyone that's had me in their bar will have probably made me one. Um I don't know if there's a why to that one. I think it's just like it's celebratory. It's like it it's quite bougie because <laughs> it's like champagne and cognac. So when I'm feeling fancy, like that's my go-to. Um obviously I really like a daiquiri. Uh I think every I think every bartender just like daiquiris. It's just like the number one way that you can sort of test a bartender's, you know, 
palette balance. Um, and then, man, what's my last one? <laughs> I should have thought so about it before. Um, my like my testing tiki drink. If you ever have me in your tiki bar and I order three dots in a dash, like it better be good. Um, and I think that's like that just speaks to like how difficult a three dots in a dash can um, is to balance. Like it's just an like, absolute bitch. So um, yeah. But also, I like I like just drinking tequila. So I'll, I'll also just as soon have a, a tequila soda. <laughs> so um, you say you, you actually spoke about decorate chicken or stud. Sorry, say that again. You, you, when you spoke about the daiquiri, what do you like, chicken or stud? Shaken. I like it freezing, freezing cold, shaken, like ice, yeah, like glass in the freezer. Um, it better have a little foam on the top. That better stick for at least the first, like, minute or two that I'm drinking it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, what about, I, I, I know most people don't, don't um, I know most people are familiar with Tiki, but just kind of explain what three dots in the dash is for guys who are not familiar with it. Um, so I've, I've had a couple of like iterations. The biggest thing that goes into three dots in a dash is like a, um, is a falernum. Um, and that's, that can be like, I've had some good falernums and some really, really bad ones. So, <laughs> um, so for whoever is like, Oh, Lana just popped on. She probably knows what a three dots in a dash is better than I. Um, um, so yeah, it's it's really like all about the falernum. It can it can be really quite like um, I find that the store bought ones can be really quite uh, confected or like sweet. Um, I mean, there are only two there are only two falernum companies that I know that are doing a good job. You know. The Velvet John John Velvet Falenum and yeah. Old Judge from Germany. Yeah, um, and and like so, I I always think it's like it's it's best to um, it's best to just make your own. Um, but yeah, anyway, other than that, there's like there's like lime, honey, uh, allspice, and then usually a good one is made with like a blend of you know agricoles and um, and aged rum. So here's my challenge to you. Do a three dots and a dash and then post it later for guys to check it out on my wall. Okay, I can do that. That'd be fun. <laughs> to learn as much as possible. So you actually yeah, have two sure. cocktails. You need to post the the two cocktails you're going to do and um, yeah. your photos and recipe. Okay, um, I can do that. Next question will be, for women who are coming up in the industry, what's your advice to them especially that's a great question Being a woman, yeah yeah what what what's the advice you can give to them especially the young ones and they're trying to find their way in this large industry um i think um it, yeah oh man that's such a good question um i i like when i look at where the industry was at when i started out and where it's at now i think we're at like completely different places. Um, as with any young bartender, I will tell you to like, go go work a pub, go work like a busy, you know, bar um, uh, that isn't a cocktail bar first before you get into cocktail bars. And I say that, um, as I'm saying that, I know that like cocktail bars are probably, they're like, probably the more welcoming spaces um the pub and like the high volume places are where you're gonna like cut your teeth and learn as uh you know you know how to be quick and, and how to pick up um there's a lot of people in this industry that um that are negative and that will like you know try to take advantage of you you just need to like you need to make sure that you trust yourself and you know that, you know, if you put all of your, if you put your effort in, you're, you're just as good as, you know, as, as anybody else, you know, if you're, if you're trying, that's, that's all, that's all I ever look for in a young bartender is that if they're, you know, willing to learn and they're willing to try and they have a good attitude, like all of the rest of this shit can be taught. It's, it's all like, it's, it's all easy. It's all about just having to, hold a jigger and learn how to put flavors together. Like we can all, we can all do it and you're absolutely not less than, um, yeah. So like, 
I guess my biggest advice would be to keep fighting and to keep believing in yourself big time. So if you were to define, I mean, then before that, well, what was one of your worst services you ever had as a bartender before you actually became an entrepreneur? Worst services? Jesus. I worked yeah. at a nightclub. Like there was, <laughs> there was a lot. <laughs> um, um, yeah, I mean, there's, there's been, there's been some hard services. Like, I don't, I'm not, I don't really know if I'm going to sit here and bitch about them because they were probably about 15 years ago, but, um, <laughs> but, um, one of the key things, actually one of my friends, um, who works in a local bar here, she has a very bad boss. And, um, and I remember there's a day she came over and she was like, um, and the, and the boss is a lady. And have oh, wow. been in the industry, oh, wow. have been just from school and joining the industry. And she came crying. Like, she was upset that she was having a boss who was the, literally at the devil of of the sorts. And sometimes we we have those people in the industry who just make your life a living hell. Yeah, it's true. I, I, what you can tell them, like, I mean, like, what's the one thing you can tell these young guys who come up with passion, but then they've never really met the devils of our industry. <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's hard, man. Like I, um, I had a boss like back, 50, I guess it was like 2007 or eight. Um, and she was a woman as well. It was like really surprising, but she would, you know, I'd come in, I was like, I was hostessing, I was like 18 or something like that. And, um, she would like pull my outfit apart. She would like, you know, she would say that I didn't know how to talk to people. It was just like, and I mean, none of these things were, were true <laughs> you know i was there and i i had the right attitude and i and you know um i i was i was trying as hard as i could and i really wanted to you know eventually get on bar and i i worked there for five years and i looking back you know i probably should have taken a step away and found somewhere that was you know more supportive of my goals and what i wanted to do because i questions please feel free to ask as we wait on kelsey to come back yeah am i back you're back did yeah, i you're cut, back. where did i cut out i saw that it, it... Uh, you were explaining about this bad boss that you had oh yeah i mean she was it, she was awful she would like cut me apart for my outfits and cut me apart for like not being able to talk to people in the right way and there was like scripts and like all this crap um which i think like you know have have a way of talking to people and you know train people in the right right way but i i worked there for five years and that was like you know thursday friday saturday service and i would come back come through on monday you know going back to school and feeling like shit about myself so i i i the one regret i have about that is like not having left earlier i should have you know found and i think we've got such a good um base in our industry now where you know, we are constantly looking for people that have the right attitude. So, you know, you're not being treated well at your job. Start looking for something else. You know, you're not trapped. You, you don't have to put up with that stuff. Hopefully. So you being a rum lover, I mean, I guess it's a question that I, I should ask. What are your top three rums? Rums? Like the one, yeah. Yeah, like if you were on an island and you had no other option, what are the top three rums that you'll pick up? Um, I, and I think this is because we can't get Agricole here. I love rum at Agricole. Um, so wow. I have a, uh, yeah. Awesome, I have awesome. A, it's, it's crazy. The, the uh, Canadian system will not allow us to get rum Agricole up in Canada. It's just fucked up. <laughs> it's really frustrating. Um, so I love Clamont. Um, I love, I use Havana Club in like all of my daiquiris and all of my like cocktail drinks. Um, I really love Havana for, um, for that. Um, and then my third, there's like a cool, um, I can't remember where it's from. I'm trying to remember. Someone brought it into, uh, Dandelion while I was working there and it's called Rum Bar. Um, and it's like this, this 
super small brand and it's just fucking delicious. I'm trying to Ramba is not what do you mean? Ramba is not small. It's like a standard pour in Jamaica by the Amazing. way. <laughs> It's delicious, and I love it, and I haven't been able to find it anywhere here. Rumba is actually amazing. They compete on the same level with Rare and Nephew. I love it. It's one of my faves. <laughs> and it should always be there, especially when you're talking about daiquiris. I mean, and uh, what I find about interesting about Rumba Agricole is that you can actually understand how different sugarcane is just from tasting different agricoles. So like one of my favorite agricoles is Rambolonia, which they produced a black cane version of um, the agricole. And it tastes like peaches and mangoes. Oh, I don't understand how. Why the hell is something tasting like peaches and mangoes? It doesn't make sense to me. Like, you know, it's like yeah. you take it and then you can't explain. And so now when you make a teposh with it, it's, you get this very tropical notes on your on your nose, but then when you taste it, it has that, you know, texture and the overproof that you get, which is also very amazing. So, yeah, that's amazing. And you can um, have it like two times a day. Um, we just got a comment from Sovereign um, down there saying, "You're bringing which rum are you bringing into Canada, Sovereign?" Yeah, let us know what you're bringing into Canada, and uh, if you need help in education, yo. I'm free. I could come up and just train <laughs> y'all. Uh, <laughs> that would be amazing. I would, we'd love to have you when uh, when the borders get lifted and when we can have you over. That would be absolutely amazing. That would be amazing. So you spoke about tequila. Oh, rumba. That's amazing. <laughs> That's very yes. exciting. By the way, so if you can hear, rumba is a standard pour for some of us. Like it's always in the back of our cabinets and awesome. lockers. <laughs> yeah. So you said you love um, tequila, right? I do. I do indeed. I mean, between tequila and mezcal, what do you prefer? Um, it depends on the occasion. Usually, if I'm drinking like, um, usually if I'm just having like a, a like a cocktail, I'll have a tequila cocktail. Um, a mezcal, I'll have like a little bit alongside a beer. Um, yeah, it depends on the occasion. I don't drink a ton of mezcal. I usually stick with, um, I usually stick with tequila, but, um, I love them both. They both have their place. So I will flip this and take it back to you. Do you have any questions for me? Feel free um, now to ask me any question you have in mind. Um, actually, I'm really, I'm really curious, like what has the, since this all happened, what has the, um, what has the climate been like in, uh, in Kenya, um, for bars? So there's been a lockdown. So the lockdown is from six or five thirty all the way to six in the morning. And then of course, so that means there are no places that are open up. It's just guys are buying food and, um, like food on the go. And so you can't really get to do the cocktails as much as you want, but more guys are doing the virtual happy hour, just like everyone else. Oh, that's good. And, and also the, uh, like the virtual trainings for DBA and uh, Bacardi and all these other brands. And then, of course, we have folks like us who just have to keep doing these conversations, you know? Yeah, which is really, really good. I saw you've got um, Ian Burrell on. And... I mean, because I feel like, not just in Africa, but I feel like I need to lift the spirits of the people up because it's not the time for you to be depressed or stay negative. You got to stay positive and know that the storm is going to pass and you have to keep your mind focused on positivity because the moment you allow yourself to stay negative, then you're going to just go down the drain, you know, and that's not something that I want to encourage. Yeah, it's really, really awesome. Yeah that you're doing this it's, it's really good to see is there like a pretty thriving cocktail community there is there lots of um lots of cocktail bars there is a lot i mean not just in kenya but across the region so the the top three regions that you could probably see cocktail culture and understand is kenya ghana south africa and a bit of Nigeria. So those are the three countries where if you really want, so like if you are going to West Africa, Ghana will be the best place to understand what uh, 
tiki cocktails are or just the craft cocktails and because it's it's weird that the three countries are basically in competition whether we're talking about during the Diageo world class or the Bacardi legacy or whatever it is we are always competing always trying to see who's going to be better than the other <laughs> Healthy yeah. competition, though, right? <laughs> you know, because it makes for better bartenders. It does, indeed. I think competitions make you um, make you think about things a little bit harder, and that's that healthy kind of camaraderie that comes out of it is is really wonderful to see. I I have okay. been dying to come to Kenya for how long, and I like I I can't wait until you know I get to actually come and see it in person and see some of these cocktail bars um, that you've been telling me about. Yeah, of course, it will be good. So just as soon as the COVID uh, situation is done, let me know when you're coming and I'll definitely be glad to host you here. Show you a couple of places and which which reminds me, there is a company that's doing amazing tonics in the city, which oh, cool. you should try. So they have like a chili turmeric tonic and then they have like a rose water and cucumber tonic that is amazing. And they are basically trying to improve the culture here by creating tonics that work with the local flavors and the local taste buds. Oh, that's cool. That's very, that's yeah. very interesting. Is there? A, do you find that like most of the bars are are tiki inspired? Are they kind of um, they kind of over the whole gamut? I think I think that the, the different setups for different occasions. So, for example. We have one bar that is doing Pisco, and it's predominantly a, a dress-up kind of setup, where you have to dress up to go to that place, and you actually have to book. And then there are places where you, you go, and you can get a range of things. So, like, one of the coolest places I personally feel that is a good entrance point is the Mulberry Project here at uh, in Kenya. Because they basically have cocktails that are within the price range and within the flexibility of people and how they have written their menu is basically you have ingredients you have um in terms of what flavors you want to get or what and how many ingredients you basically just want so it's like three things what ingredient what uh, botanicals and what flavors that's it it makes it easier for people who are coming into the industry to actually learn that's awesome that's that's really cool i think that's really important to have those types of styles of bars um, in any city, helps people learn, helps the consumer learn as well, right? I mean, it helps consumers learn. It helps consumers understand why, for example, chili always works with tequila and not something else, for example. For sure. Yeah, yeah big time. We have one of those here. It's called, uh, well, I have a similar kind of bar. It's called um, Civil Liberties, and you kind of just go in and tell the bartender, like, what you feel like on that on that day, sort of add a boy style, and then they make you a, a, a cocktail. And it's yeah, it's really important that, that that helps like our industry develop more of a cocktail culture around everything. So, the, I mean, I know you spoke about coffee sometime, like uh, probably in the beginning. And uh, one of the good things that we have here, or we are fortunate enough, is that we grow coffee and tea. And um, that makes for interesting conversation or interesting cocktails because we get to use what we have here, you know, mm -hmm. which is always amazing. Oh yeah. You don't have to struggle to be no. Making me want to come even more. <laughs> come. I mean there's too much coffee, too much tea. <laughs> different types of tea, different types of coffee. And I mean, like as I said again, like even where I stay, I am fortunate enough to have a guava tree in the garden. And with a guava tree being in the garden, I get to see monkeys every day. Amazing. Eat my guavas. I don't know why. They just like it. So I literally <laughs> don't have to even play for the national park kind of thing because it's just right in front of my bucket. So, question? <laughs> any questions? What's that? Do you have any questions for me? Um, I I think I think I just like I, I, it's it's pretty amazing that you know that you have that you're doing all of this and that you're, you know, bringing everybody um, together in an online forum, you know, we've been trying to like connect for a very long time. So, I mean, the biggest, the biggest, you know, cool thing that we're getting out of this is, is being able to connect with people that are, that are so far away. And Definitely. 
maybe yeah. it's giving us the opportunity to check up on people who previously was hard because we all had our busy schedule but now you have more reason to spend time with guys because you now can say you're not free or you're not available yeah <laughs> i think my question would be my question would be what does the future look like for Boris, after this? i mean for for the industry just after this i mean because i know things are going to be the same you know yeah, definitely definitely not i think that we're we're going to go back into a space where people are going to be a little bit afraid to be in public spaces um we're gonna you know we're gonna have we're, our bars aren't going to be able to be as packed um we're gonna have to keep the to-go cocktails where you know who the people who have who've done it so far i think we're just gonna have to keep that going to keep to be okay. able to keep our industry alive and you know support people so um it's going to be different for sure um hopefully hopefully the businesses that have you know that have you know come close to closing or are able to stay open and we're able to like all push through it but i think that we're going to come out of the other side of this with a bit fewer bars and really having to like pull together and support each other and figure out how to how to you know how to get through this together it's funny you say that because right now i'm thinking of a cocktail that i could possibly think about after this like return of the storm or something after the storm <laughs> something with that title or something <laughs> Because <laughs> I feel like we will need to do like cocktails that are primarily like because you know everyone will have lost their taste buds at some point, and we'll need to create something that will be quite simple but remind people why we always go back there. Yeah, the, the apocalypse. Um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's Just that. Me. I also think that like the at-home cocktail kits, like being able to send people like. stuff to make things at home i think that's just going to continue to be a thing um okay. and I, i think that's pretty important to kind of keep our culture our cocktail culture alive um yeah it's just important like uh hopefully people cuz i mean making recipes for drinkers at home versus making recipes for drinks in the bar are like two completely different beasts so hopefully maybe the we can get the home consumer kind of making some more complicated stuff during this time so that when they when we come out of the other side you know they have a, a better appreciation for everything that we do behind the bar <laughs> i think yeah because we we're not just bartenders i think i love what dale said the other day when i gave him an interview and we were talking and he said we don't go to the bar or the restaurant for the drinks we go for the bartender because we want to see you shine we want to interact with you. I mean if you wanted to get a drink we could probably just get it in the house. But then I like going to places where I can see my friends do all yeah. these things and just see the reaction of the clients or the consumers because that's always amazing. Yeah. I mean that's that's the part of it I think that we're all missing right now is just like that uh that that and gratitude that each other or we just fist bumping like yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Her foot tap. <laughs> um So my yeah. I think I would want to ask have you tried anything from Africa? Other uh uh in terms of like food or flavors or anything like that? Like spirits. Spirits. Um I don't think I have to be honest with you. How come? How come? How dare you not know. take in <laughs> there you? How dare you get on live and don't take something from Africa? I mean there's a lot that, that that's coming out from here. There's I mean there's um the the good rums that are coming out, some good gins that are also coming out. Um there is a company that's trying to do an agave spirit in South Africa which is amazing. Oh cool. But I can't even explain what it is. It's just interesting. they call it leonista the fourth rabbit awesome yeah i can, i can't wait to like come out and try be able to try some of that stuff which makes me curious i'm always trying to figure out what's this thing with the rabbit and tequila or mezcal or b and i don't know what's the connection i don't, i don't know if i'm the right person to tell you that <laughs> i don't know <laughs> So I mean right I guess we will leave it to the guys if anyone has a question please feel free to 
ask. Please write down your questions or comments for um, Kelsey um, to prepare. I will Before. also make sure that I post um, the recipes for those three drinks that I made on here and um, I'll put them on my stories today um, so y'all can uh, try the recipes and try the drinks. Just remember to actually tag me because I, I want to do will. them. I, the storyline is like just 24 hours and then that's it. So that sucks. <laughs> I'll tag you. As compared to when you have it on your on your on your status and then you can actually always go back and refer yeah oh yeah i can put it on my highlights as well so it's just stuck up there yes so guys do you have any questions for kelsey or i we have five minutes with you guys um feel free to ask any question i think we got a lot of the questions out of the way uh earlier um if anyone if anyone doesn't think of anything right now, you're ha I'm happy to like answer anything on my stories. If you want to like bounce any questions off of like, um, you know, using local ingredients or trying to be more sustainable or, or have any questions about your own personal challenges in the bar, just um, I'll slide into my DMs. Is that a thing that we say? <laughs> By the way, uh, if you guys want us to do another session with Kelsey, please just let us know what topics you want us to cover, what do you want us to talk about? Or you just want us to, whatever, let us know. If you enjoyed the session, also please remember to comment and let us know what you think about this experience. Yep. Cool. Well, thanks for chatting with me. Thanks for having me on your Instagram. <laughs> this was amazing. I hope you're going to catch up with uh, me tomorrow because I'm having uh, Jay Khan as my first live feed and then I'm going to do Ian Burrell at uh, five. And then we're going to have um, Paul Scott, who, do, who does Amniac. So I guess I'm fully bumped tomorrow. If you can catch any of the sessions, you'll be good. I saw that. Yeah, I'll, I'll tune in tomorrow for sure. Um, we just got a drink, uh, a question in from... Um, a, from New cocktail. Yeah, for, for cocktail kits for consumers. Um, yeah, so I sell them. There's a number of, like, your favorite cocktail bars. A lot of people are creating uh, at-home cocktail kits. So... Basically, you can buy them usually off uh, the website, um, the bar's website. So mine is supernovaballroom.com um, slash dolly trolley drinks. And you can just buy like the non-alcoholic mixers. So it'll have bitters, um, syrup, um, acidifier in there. And all you have to do is like put it with your favorite spirit, um, top it with soda and voila, at home cocktail. And I think that there's a lot of different places that, uh, you know, that's just for Toronto, but find your look up your local bar um find out your favorite and then they might be doing cocktail kits as well so it's a really nice way to like support the industry as well thanks for the question oh last i think the last question i will ask probably is three tips on wellness that people should know in the industry is what three tips on wellness wellness what are the three yeah um Okay, so these are these are pretty specific to me because I think everybody has to kind of figure out what their own is. But um, mine is either like yoga or running in the morning. Um, you just got to get something done because it just makes your whole body feel a lot better, especially when we're like sitting at home and inside and stagnant. Sometimes we're just getting outside. Um, okay. I, yeah, I try to not succumb to like eating one staff meal a day <laughs> when you're on shift you know, trying, trying to like spread it out um, over the course of the day and like getting enough food. Um, we have very physical jobs. I think people forget how much food it actually takes us to get through a shift. <laughs> um, okay. And then I also, I also meditate. I know that that like, that's not for everybody, but finding like 10 minutes to just clear my head first thing in the morning, it definitely just doesn't get done at night. Um, so like that meditation run yoga kind of deal in the morning kind of sets me up for my day and especially during this time, like if you're needing to talk to somebody that's not, um, you know, not a friend that's like a, more of a therapist. I know that there's also a lot of therapists right now that are giving out like little half hour free sessions or little chat sessions. Um, and I've found it like really massively helpful for myself as well. We have like 10 seconds to go and I don't know. <laughs> you wanna come, we do like a last 
five minutes talk on wellness. That will be good. Right now? Yeah. Yeah. Um So yes, guys, uh, phew, we were with uh, Kelsey. We were just talking about wellness. I'm sorry that uh, the call had to drop. Instagram hers are one hour time limit. We're sorry about that. Just if you guys can log back in, tell your friends, uh, give us a minute. Um, boop. Where were we? Yeah, we were talking about wellness and uh, yeah. Yeah. Um. I. I know. I know. This isn't like available everywhere, but um. And I'm just going to talk about this like briefly because I think that there are other people in the industry that are probably a lot more qualified to talk about it than I am. But um, uh, there's an uh, organization called Mind the Bar Canada that um. There's a person called Mackenzie who is uh behind it, and she is absolutely incredible. So she is, um, kindly offered some of her time. Um to do like a, a one hour sort of chat session about how to um, how to get through this really incredibly difficult time. Um, so I'll be announcing that in the next couple of days on my um, on my Instagram. Um, it's uh, I think it's really important to have these like discussions around around mental health. So I will do a, a, an announcement about that, but she's just going to go through some like things that you can go go to do, you know, to to keep yourself sort of active and i think it's really difficult we need just to do, like give ourselves that extra time to to recognize that we're not going to be as productive as we were before and we're like um you know allowing ourselves to be exhausted and to be tired even though we're not really doing much it's um it's just like a, it's a whole part of this um and it's really important to like if once you recognize that you can kind of compartmentalize that and um and sort of move on with your life <laughs> this is a hard time you know uh hey ruby yes we appreciate your love ruby thanks so much um i guess also for me as a person um tips on wellness will be of course eat well that's important eat your veggies man like your veggies <laughs> your herbs your bitter things that is important <laughs> number one two i guess um sleep if you need to sleep please sleep sleep is important I think we have been fortunate enough to be given time to rest. We have been working for such a long time. Now yeah, you have no yeah. reason not to sleep. I know our schedules are like up and down, but yeah, have enough rest. More importantly, meditate and work out. I think for me, my way of working out is probably just, I love music, so I tend to dance a lot. Amazing. Like, that's just routine. Because <laughs> I feel like that's, that, that's a stress releaser, you know? And dancing, especially in a place where it's you and the monkeys and the guava trees, <laughs> is good. So. I'm jealous. <laughs> yeah. And of course, because I think I'm, I'm fortunate enough, but I also say, you know what, I think during this time, it's, it's really important to check out on your friends, check out on your family. If there are guys who are not picking up their phone, please just check out on them because we are all in this together and we are going to get out of this together. And if you guys have anything, just let us know. We'll, we are here to help. We are always here to help. We're always here to be there for you. I think that's important. Big time. Yeah. yeah. Big time. Nice advice. Well, thank you so much for having me on here. This was wonderful. It was really good to connect with you finally after so many years of, of back and forth and, you know, trying to, to, to have a conversation and get together. That's the one positive thing that we're getting out of all of this is connecting with people. Thank you so much. I look forward to seeing you in Kenya. And if there are any projects you want to call me up on board, I'm here. Definitely. And, and we'd love to have you in Canada at some point too. Definitely. Yeah. I mean, we're going to close and guys are trying to join. Leon, we had like an hour of conversation. <laughs> You need to go and check out what we did. So thanks. Take care. Have a blast. And see you yeah. tomorrow. See you tomorrow. Ciao. Okay, thanks. Bye. Bye-bye. So.